All right, this may be our last video on Gauss's Law, and now we're getting to um, what was possibly the most difficult thing. I hope by this point that we are um, pretty familiar with things so that when we look at Gauss's Law, Uh, when we see it, um, this part, we instantly recognize as having only three possibilities for the things that we're doing. Uh, the first one is spherical, to where we have e times 4 pi r squared. The second one is cylindrical, where it's e times 2 pi r l. And, and the third one being a planar charge symmetry, where we have e times a. Or, or 2a, depending on what the case may be. But this side of the equation, the, the integral of e dot dA uh, over a closed surface, will always be one of these because we're only looking at specific symmetries. Uh, and then really the hard part of this becomes Q enclosed. Uh, and, and again, once we're outside of a charge distribution, it's whatever the Q is uh, and we're done. If we're inside of a conductor, Q enclosed is zero. Um, for you know, for uniformly charged uh, Q enclosed was always equal to rho times our volume enclosed. Uh, and we could express rho in many different ways. One of them is, uh, you know, sigma. Sigma times a, a length or a depth or a radius. Another way to express rho would be um, lambda times an area. Uh, multiple ways to express rho. It, it just depends on how it works. Um, so that's for a uniform charge distribution. We're doing non a non-uniform charge distribution and this is the case when rho actually is a function of R. So we're looking at a changing charge distribution. We'll, we'll talk about what that may look like uh, and how to find Q enclosed from that. So for our non-uniform charge distribution we have rho as a function of R which means let's say for our, our sphere um, rho could be you know very thick and then move out towards decreasing values as, as we move throughout this this sphere. Um, and so if we put in our Gaussian thing here, our Gaussian surface right here, for that little surface R, we need to know how much charge we're enclosing for rho as a function of R. Uh, in, in that case, Q enclosed is actually going to be the integral um, of rho as a function of R times our volume but it's going to be differential volume as we go through this. So um, instead of running you through every possible example, what we'll do is talk about what dV is for each of a sphere and a cylinder. And it's actually um, it's something that's going to be familiar to us. Um, what we have to recognize is that the integral of dV by itself is always going to give us volume. So for a sphere, uh, dV is equal to um, 4 pi r dr. Because if we take the integral of that, 4 pi r squared dr, I apologize. Uh, if we take the integral of that, it's going to give us 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now our, our limits will be from zero to the, the radius of the sphere that we're talking about. That's what dV is. So for a sphere, if we're talking about a changing, and the first example we look at in class is going to be a sphere, with a changing density, then we plug in that changing density and we plug in the dV for a sphere. For a cylinder, dV, and, and it's, a, it's going to be a very similar process. It's going to be the surface area um, 2 pi r l dr. 
And again, we're going to be going from zero to whatever the radius of our cylinder is. And then we plug this in for dV and then take the integral. And all of it depends on how it's going to work. But if, if you look at this, if you take this integral, just in general from zero to r, it's going to give you pi r squared L, which is the volume inside of a cylinder. So for a non-uniform charge distribution, this is what we're looking at. These are going to be our dVs that we plug into this. Um, so the important thing really to note is that Q enclosed is the integral um, from zero to the radius of our thing of this function, this function of charge density times dV. And dV is going to be different for a sphere and a cylinder, but you're going to need to know both of these. And part of what we'll do in class, we'll do another... Uh, foldable things where everything's on the same piece of paper we can quickly look at how everything's going to look um, in general so that's that's actually it for Gauss's law we're not even gonna look at a non-uniform charge distribution for for slab um, we're not so um, the next question that often comes up with Gauss's law is looking at potential um, and so what I'm gonna do is, is look at Basically, for a multi-leveled sphere, uh, embedded spheres, the electric field as a function of R, and we'll say that we have A and between A and B, B and C. So this is for, let's say, that's radius A. We got some charge on that. We have a, a shell around that. There's a B on the inside and C on the outside, and we've got some charge distributed there. Looking at the electric field, l let's say it's it's a non-uniform charge density, so it builds up, and then from A, it's gonna it's gonna dive down. Between B and C, it's a conductor, and then when we get out of C, we've picked up some more charge, so we're gonna fall. Oof. It's supposed to be a one over r squared kind of thing down from there and so that's what our electric field looks like there's electric field that builds up as we get close to the surface drops down to zero because we're inside of a conductor builds up in that middle part as we get close to the surface and then drops down to zero as we lose more and more and more and more charge um, so sort of a piecewise discontinuous look at the electric field uh, looking at that the electric field would be something like you know between zero, when R is between zero and A, we've got a, um, a KQR over A cubed kind of thing. And then between A and B, my electric field, oh, that goes here. Between A and B, my electric field is KQ over R squared. Between B uh, and C, the electric field is zero, and then on the outside, we'll, we'll just say it's 2Q. Um, when R is greater than C, the electric field is 2KQ over R squared. So that's sort of what this is describing with the electric field. Now, finding the potential. Find the potential energy at R, wherever R may be. So let's say R is here. It doesn't matter. R is going to change. What we have to remember is that the potential at R is the work per unit charge from infinity, from infinity, so far away, to R. Okay. So what we're doing when we look at that, the only way that we're going to be able to get it is to say that potential is the integral of the electric field with respect to R. And we're going from infinity to R. Now looking at our electric field, uh, it's, it's, it's easy to see that it's not going to be the same function for electric field in each one of those regions. So when we take this integral, it's actually going to be, let's say R is inside of A. Um, it's going to be 4 
separate integrals that describe the electric field the entire the entire for the entire distribution okay so the first one we're gonna go from I need a new color we're gonna go from infinity to C and and then we're gonna go from C to B we're gonna go from B to A and then let's say R is inside of A that takes me A to R what's notable is I'm gonna have to add up the work I do the entire way so from infinity to C this is my function of the electric field 2 kq over r squared dr. Well, I can take that integral, no big deal. From b to c, we said the electric field was zero. That's not going to add any more to my voltage. It's just going to let it be the same. And then from b to a, we have kq over r squared dr. And then from a to r, we have kq r over a cubed dr. Um, and what's notable about the potential is that it's going to be additive the entire time. I'm going to do a certain amount of work coming to here. It's going to go up. Here, if I can see if we can make this look normal. Um, let's say this is my graph of potential. Nope, that's not going to be my graph of potential. Let's say my graph of potential is here, right? As we come up to that surface, we're going to do work, we're going to do work, we're going to do work, and it's going to grow until we get to that surface. And once we're inside of here, we're not doing any extra work. I can freely move through there. And then as we get more and more towards the origin, uh, it's going to grow. And, and then as the electric field falls, it's still going, it's still going to grow a little bit. So we see an additive kind of voltage all the way through, but this is the integral we're going to need to take to do that. It's just going to take practice, and, then, and I've put some voltage on each of the worksheets that we've done, but the important thing, the really important thing to note is we're still going from infinity to R. We just, my equation for the electric field changed along the way, and we had to account for that. Um, that is, well, that's really it for Gauss's law.